you know, with this trend of YouTubers stepping down and quitting and going off to do other things, you know, you guys would think I would follow suit. Ha! Nope, you're still stuck with me. What's up, guys? Blue Like Rock here, and today I tried out the Apple Vision Pro, a brand new headset that Apple just released today, and uh, I got to check it out. I didn't buy it because I am responsible with my money, and also I can't afford it. But also, uh, because I already have a Meta Quest 3, I recently just upgraded my Quest 2 to a Quest 3. I got it right here. Whoa! And I've been loving this thing so far, so I wanted to see how uh, the Apple Vision Pro compared to this headset. That was my expectation going into today. So, I woke up at like 7 in the morning, drove all the way across town to my local Apple store, and waited outside in the bitter cold for around an hour. Uh, throughout that time, I just kind of stood there like an idiot. Luckily, there were other people there, so I was able to talk with them for a while. And I actually had a little uh, guest appearance by Plain Rock 124 a fellow YouTuber who uh, specializes in tech destruction. I've actually met him a few times now, a couple times at VidCon, which I'm showing on screen now, and then this time here. I didn't take any like pictures or videos with him, uh, this time at least, mainly because we were kind of in a rush to get into the store, because he arrived like five minutes before they opened. <laughs> but with that being said, whenever we were allowed to go inside, I found out that they weren't hosting the demo events until later that day. So after around a couple hours of waiting or so, I was invited back at 11.30 a.m. to try out the headset. So this video is going to be my thoughts on that specific demo event, uh, how I think the uh, Apple Vision Pro compares to the MetaQuest 3, and is it even worth it to buy? Alright, so the first thing that I did whenever they uh, brought out the demo unit was I took a video of it because this thing, it, it looks premium. It looks like a premium a VR headset, even though it's not a VR headset, it's a spatial computer. It's a VR headset. I mean, a VR AR headset uh, with mixed reality. That's pretty much- WHO'S CALLING ME?! NO! I'M RECORDING A VIDEO! But yes, actually, before they had me try on the headset, they had me do a, like, a facial scan of my face to see which um, which one of the facial interfaces would best fit my face, which I find pretty interesting, because when comparing that to the Quest 3, which just comes with one standard stock facial interface that should fit everyone's faces, man, that looks dumb without the headset on. <laughs> but compared to that, it makes sure that there is no light that comes into the field of view whenever you're in that VR AR experience. Uh, so it kind of does add to the premium feel of the Apple Vision Pro, which I mean, for $3,500, it better be a premium product. But once they got my fit, they actually brought out the demo unit itself, uh, displayed very, very Apple, is what I'll say. It was presented in a very Apple fashion, very clean. There's no, uh, no packaging or anything like that. They just brought it out on a tray, as you can see here. So when I put on the headset for the first time, before I could even uh, turn on the headset or anything like that, they had me do the IPD adjustment, which is apparently automatic. Uh, I just had to press the button, and the lenses kind of like uh, slid back and forth. I'm using the Quest 3 here as a reference. I did not buy the Vision Pro again. <laughs> but the lenses here automatically moved to fit where my pupils were on my eyes. So right out of the box, you know, it's a very clean, very easy startup experience. Um, and they actually took me through that startup experience. So when the headset turned on, I was greeted to the real world, as it is through the Apple Vision Pro. I saw the trademark Apple Hello in cursive. Now I'll share my thoughts about the pass-through at the end of this video, but first I'm going to go through everything that I experienced through this demo event, and if it's worth it for you guys to go out and try it out for yourself. Uh, spoiler alert, you, you will want to check it out for yourself. It's pretty cool. So the setup process is super easy. All we had to do was look at six different dots. So there are six dots that appeared on the screen, and you would just pinch your fingers as you looked at them to calibrate each of the different points in the Vision Pro's vision, I guess? 
Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. But yeah, I had to do that three times. And when I was done with that, I was taken to the main menu. And when I was in the main menu, I was able to see just how vibrant this display is. Like, the display of the Apple Vision Pro is no joke. The colors on it are super vibrant, super bright, everything is super clear. Uh, the resolution in each eye is around 4K, if not exactly 4K. Alright, so the first app that I actually tried out was the Photos app. They had a bunch of demo photos in this album that they wanted me to look at. So I started off by looking at a standard photo, which when I, you know, looked at it and pinched my fingers, it opened up the photo. And I was able to, like, you know, zoom in and zoom out with the hand gestures. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just a picture, right? The part that really impressed me was when, whenever we went to a panorama shot. So as you can see in this trailer, uh, in the original Apple Vision Pro trailer, you can see the panorama can open up and truly just surround your vision. That was not just in the trailer. That's what actually happened in the headset, which kind of blew me away. So when I clicked on the panorama button to open up that panorama, it truly became like a full 180 degree picture. And it was, I mean, it wasn't 3D. You could still see that it is a picture, but it's still fully surrounding your vision. But yeah, seeing the panorama photos all around you is super neat. And I can kind of see the draw to kind of want to get an Apple Vision Pro, but it's still not $3,500 worth. Um, I could do pretty much everything in that on my $500 Meta Quest 3. So, what does the Apple Vision Pro have that this thing can't do? Spatial photos. The next photo that I looked at was a full-on 3D image uh, taken from the headset itself. And this, this is where I can kind of see the justification for the insane, insane price point. So this was shown in the trailer um, that you can take these 3D pictures and videos with the headset itself and also I think with the newest iPhone and these these truly blew me away. So swiping to the spatial photo, it's like, okay, you know, it's like it's something with some depth to it, but it's still a picture, right? Uh, swiping over to the left one more time and that gave me the spatial video. So this, this was kind of like in a faded out box. So it wasn't the full 180 degrees, but it was still like a small window in front of you where you can see this 3D video. I have the demo video playing in the background right now, but it's of this birthday party. Uh, and you can see like the, the smoke of the birthday candle floating towards you. You can see like the point of the party hat in the side of your vision. Um, and that mixed with the surrounding area of the Apple Store was... it was kind of cool. And that's just like a recurring theme with the Apple Vision Pro, is that it's cool. It's really cool. It's still not $3,500. And the fact that it's priced at that high of a price point, it will definitely uh, sway a lot of people away from it, including myself. I don't see myself picking one of these up. But anyways, next I move on to... Uh, opening up a couple different apps, pointing pointing my fingers and like dragging the windows around. It was kind of fun to mess around with that kind of stuff for a bit. But once I was done messing around with that for a couple more minutes, they told me to open up the Apple TV app. And this is where they showed me the immersive video options that the Apple Vision Pro offers. So the first clip that they had me click on was a clip from the Mario movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie. And it was just a short clip, it was still a flat screen, but it was three-dimensional. So it was kind of like I was watching uh, the movie in 3D at the movie theater, which I found kind of cool. Uh, I could resize the window as big or small as I wanted to, and it was just like a short 30-second clip of the movie. Which is like, okay, now this is kind of cool. You can see all these 3D movies like you saw them in the theater, which you can do on other VR headsets. Uh, with certain applications and whatnot, but having like the ease of use, I guess, is a decent selling point for the Apple Vision Pro. Now, the next clip that they had me see was a movie that I saw on IMAX myself, so I was able to have that as a point of reference going into it, and that was a clip from Avatar The Way of Water. Now, say what you want about the movie, but 
you can't deny the visuals and like the landscapes and everything were breathtaking and seeing this in vr not full vr but still on a flat screen but seeing it in 3d with the immersive slider on the vision pro maxed up all the way so you just see the screen that was cool that was really cool and that's one thing I forgot to mention about the Vision Pro. Uh, instead of double tapping the side of the headset to enter pass-through mode or go into immersive mode, uh, you just like spin the dial. So it's like a big Apple Watch dial on top of the headset. If you turn it clockwise, you turn on pass-through. And if you turn it counterclockwise, you enter immersive mode. So those two movie clips were cool. They were really cool to see. But the third clip that they showed this is the one that really blew me away. And this was what Apple is calling the immersive video experience. I don't know if this comes with every Vision Pro. I don't have one, so I can't say if it does or not. But this was a true VR experience. So the best way that I can describe this video experience was that it was a 180 degrees panoramic view type video. So it's like if someone opened a panorama, but it was a video and it was in 3D. So it's exactly everything that I said the panorama wasn't, the immersive video experience was. So this video experience took you through a bunch of different clips. Uh, you can probably see them on screen if I found a video of it. If not, you're just gonna see my face. But yeah, you can see all these different cinematic shots. They all look like stock footage, they probably are. But just seeing this in VR with the high fidelity screens of the Vision Pro, that was really cool. It was really cool, and I highly recommend everyone check this out if you can. And that was one of the last things that I did with the Vision Pro before I moved on to a kind of extended demo experience because there was pretty much nobody in the Apple Store by the time that I made it to try out the Vision Pro. So they let me have a couple more minutes to test out a couple more applications. So one of the first ones that I tested out, and this was one that I saw a trailer for last night, and it had me pretty excited. It was Synth Riders. So Synth Riders is a game that's pretty much like Beat Saber, but instead of slicing the blocks with sabers, you punch them with your fists, pretty much. And now one thing that really caught my attention about this game compared to the version on the Quest 3 or Quest 2 is the graphics. So the graphics got a complete overhaul for the Vision Pro, and it was, it was stunning. I mean, it looked like everything was made of glass, but very Apple <laughs> for everything that looked like glass. But it was a really cool experience because I did the mixed reality version. So it's like the window opened up in front of you and you could see some footage of the Quest 3's mixed reality mode on screen right now. And then the Vision Pros. So you can see the difference between the two games. Now I only did one song because I wanted to check out one more application on the Vision Pro before they told me, okay, you know, that's enough. You've had enough. You're gonna buy it yet? <laughs> but yes, it definitely was a cool experience. And the last thing that I tried out was just opening up a couple applications, uh, making them like as big as I wanted to, shrinking them down. Like, I just wanted to play around with the headset a bit uh, before they told me to take it off and that the demo experience was over. So. What are my thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro? It's... How do I put this? It's cool. It's definitely cool. Um, the obvious thing floating over everyone's head um, regarding this headset is the price. I do not think, even after trying it out for an extended period of time, I don't think it's worth $3,500. <laughs> I would not buy this myself. Uh, I would probably go back and check it out again if I have the opportunity to, but I wouldn't buy it. So some pros and cons. The pros, the screens are very vibrant and colorful. Uh, the 3D demo video, the uh, immersive video experience, as you will, that was super neat. Seeing all these different scenes in 3D, that was really cool. Seeing all the panoramic photos around you, that was also pretty neat. Next up, the fact that you can capture and play back 3D video, it's pretty neat. It's more of a gimmick feature. It's kind of like the uh, a higher quality version of the Nintendo 3DS 3D video, uh, but it is definitely really cool and very impressive technically. Oh my goodness. And next up, Synth Riders. So 
even though I played the game a lot on the MetaQuest 3 and Quest 2 in the past, it was cool to play it with a fresh coat of paint on the Apple Vision Pro. Not a system seller by any means, but it was still cool to see it. Uh, cool to see some games on this thing, even though Apple isn't really promoting this as a gaming headset. Heck, you can't even connect it to your computer. There was no, like, USB-C port. There's no ports on this headset. There's only the uh, charging puck, and that's it. So everything else is in this headset. But that's, that's kind of dwelling more on the cons territory. I'll get there. Next up, the immersive video. So the clips from Avatar The Way of Water and from the Super Mario Brothers movie, they were cool. The fact that you can just watch your existing a library of movies if you have them in this new 3D mode. That is kind of neat. Still not worth $3,500. <laughs> and the last pro that I want to list out is the compatibility with MacBook. Now, I don't have a MacBook and they didn't really let me try this feature out in store, but based on what the trailers are showing, you can open up like two additional windows for your MacBook with the Vision Pro. So it's acting as like a second and third monitor. And you can make these windows as big or as small as you want, uh, which is absolutely really cool. The only downside, and this is something that I think they could easily add in an update, and that's compatibility with iPad. So they don't currently support the iPad at all, even though I use this thing like pretty much daily for drawing and whatnot. Um, you can't use it at all with the Vision Pro. And considering it's a part of the Apple ecosystem, and the fact that it's $3,500, you would think it would come with some kind of compatibility with it. No, just MacBook. Just a, as long as you have the $1,000 computer, you can use the $3,000 spatial computer. Apple! And that rolls right into the cons. Um, first thing I want to touch on is the pass-through. So, the pass-through on the MetaQuest 3, for example, is decent. It's decent. Um... There is still obviously grain. There's camera grain, like there is a lot of noise, especially in a darker environment. Um, it is not like a crystal clear representation of the real world, you're still looking through cameras. And the same can be said about the Apple Vision Pro, you're still looking through cameras. And because of this, the pass-through isn't as good as I was expecting it. The overall experience in the Apple Vision Pro's pass-through is that it's very muddy. Like, the colors aren't that vibrant. You can still see, like, some blurriness around people's heads and faces. It's definitely not as clear as it looked in the trailer, which, I mean, who was expecting this thing to look exactly as it did in the trailer? Another thing I noticed whenever I entered that pass-through mode for the first time was the field of view. So the field of view isn't actually that great. <laughs> I think it's around the same as the Quest 2, where it's around 90 to 100 degrees FOV. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I do know that the Quest 3, a $500 headset, has a wider FOV than the uh, $3,000 or nearly $4,000 Apple Vision Pro. That shouldn't be the case. And along with that, there is this weird chromatic aberration effect around the edges. This video from The Verge that I'm playing right now shows a pretty accurate representation of what I'm talking about. So the edges of the display in your peripheral vision have this kind of like prism-like effect around it, and there's a slight vignette around the edges. I'm not sure if this was my light seal being not fit to my face perfectly, uh, because I had a couple issues with the scans when I was scanning my face, but it was definitely weird. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting from a $3,000 headset. And next up, the weight. So this thing is heavy. Like, the Quest 3 with the default head strap is considerably heavy. You will get a headache if you don't absolutely adjust it perfectly with the default head strap. That's why I have an aftermarket head strap. Um, yeah, it's no different with the Apple Vision Pro. Now, I don't know how the dual strap fits on, uh, but I was able to try out just the single strap, the one that you saw in the trailer. And the single strap, after around 45 minutes to an hour of use, yeah, I could definitely feel the weight on my face. And one of the last cons that I want to go over is something that I touched on before, and that's the fact that there is no PC VR capability at all. 
And actually, gaming as a whole seems to be kind of like an afterthought with this headset. Think of the Apple Vision Pro as a more expensive MacBook with extra steps. Now, don't get me wrong, scribbling around in a big blown up window of Photoshop the size of a wall is pretty fun, but it's still not worth $3,500. <laughs> now, overall, the Apple Vision Pro is something that I think everyone should try out at least once. Uh, go down to your local Apple store, see if they have any openings for the demo event. I highly recommend at least checking that out. Um, I don't recommend buying it because, like I said, there is a lot of issues with it. It's heavy, the pass-through ain't that great, uh, there's that weird lens effect that's happening right now, uh, and that's something that really can't be fixed with updates. It's just a first-generation item, first-generation product. It's not... it doesn't feel complete. So overall, I think I'm gonna be sticking with the Quest 3 for now, just because, uh, you know, I already have it, and I don't have to spend $3,500 to get a slightly better version of that. But we will see. We'll see what's in the future for Apple and their Vision lineup of headsets. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video on my thoughts of the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, this will probably be the only video on the Apple Vision Pro that I'll make on this channel, because, like I said before, I'm not going to be buying one. Uh, I've seen what I need to see, and I recommend that everyone go out and check out that demo event if it's still available near you. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a like to get a little bump in the algorithm. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye!